these are the very worst places on the web in the form of an iceberg. We'll start with the more creepy and weird, then as we move down the chart, the websites will become more obscure and disturbing. I made this iceberg with my friend Marauder on Discord, and this honestly has some of the worst content humanity has to offer. Let's start at the tip of the iceberg. Why, 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 why? info is quite an intriguing website. What makes it stand out is its randomness. Every time you hit refresh, something new pops up on your screen. It seems like just a collage of random images and GIFs every time, which leads to weird videos or more randomly generated content. At the bottom of the site, you can see another interesting aspect being three shapes. These actually lead you to the website's NFTs. They're priced at one Ethereum, which is about 2000 American dollars at the time of me recording this. Ashley Madison is a website that's a bit notorious in the world of online dating, but for a very specific reason. It launched in 2001 and it's designed primarily to help people who are married or in committed relationships find opportunities for infidelity. In other words, it's a platform for people looking to cheat on their partners. Now the way Ashley Madison works is a bit different from your standard dating site. It's tailored to provide a discreet way for individuals to connect with others seeking extramarital relationships. The site opens with a tagline that's pretty direct about its purpose. Life is short have an affair. One of the unique features of Ashley Madison is its emphasis on privacy and discretion. Users have the ability to mask or blur their photos and can reveal them only to individuals they choose. However, in 2015, Ashley Madison suffered a massive data breach. Hackers managed to steal the personal information of millions of users, including names, email addresses, and other sensitive details. The event was a huge scandal because it obviously exposed the identities of many individuals who were looking to cheat on their partners. The release even included data from customers who had previously paid a $19 fee to have Ashley Madison delete their data. Though post-breach, Ashley Madison has claimed to have beefed up their security measures, but the incident forever tainted the website. The Homicide Monitor is a comprehensive public data set focusing on murder across the globe. The website covers a wide range of countries and territories with a particular focus on the Americas. It provides updated information, including the latest available data for most countries up to the year 2022. Using the platform, you can see some striking statistics, like the fact that the Americas, home to 13% of the world's population, accounts for 34% of global homicides. Even more startling is that Latin America and the Caribbean combined, which only makes up 8% of the world's population, is responsible for 28% of homicides. It also offers deeper insights into the nature and trends of homicidal violence. For example, it highlights that almost 48,000 people were killed in Brazil in 2022, making it the highest number of homicides in the world for that year. The site also sheds light on the use of firearms and homicides. In Latin America and the Caribbean, 71% of homicides are committed with firearms, which is significantly higher than the worldwide average of 41%. The Homicide Monitor can also show the impact of the pandemic on homicide rates. In the Americas, homicides only fell by 3% in 2020. Windows93.net is an interesting website that acts as a virtual operating system. It's set up to look and feel like an old school's Windows system, but it's got its own unique twist. Within this virtual OS, you'll find a few weird applications. For instance, there's a game that's basically Wolfenstein, and there's another feature called Virtual Girl, which is just a character that sits at the bottom of your screen. As you explore deeper, you'll come across various Easter eggs and oddities. There's a few unusual GIFs, there's Star Wars written in ASCII for some reason, and other fake virus apps that corrupt your fake computer in ways that can be a bit unexpected. The Library of Babel is a digital homage to a concept from a story by Jorge Luis Borges. The site and its companion, the Babel Image Archives, dives deep into the idea of infinity through text and images. It's basically the monkey typewriter theory in image form. If you sat a monkey down in front of a typewriter for all of infinity, that monkey would, given enough time, type out the full works of Shakespeare, the Bible, the script of this video, literally anything and everything. The Babel Image Archives in particular plays with the concept of creating every possible image on a 640 by 4 416 pixel canvas using a palette of 4096 different colors. The numbers do get quite mind-boggling quickly, as this website basically holds every image that could ever be. From extremely mundane collages of random pixels, to works of fine art, you can search for images by uploading your own, which then gets matched with a similar, though slightly altered image from the archive, complete with a unique identifier number. The vast collection is part of a larger website inspired by Borges' story, where the Library of Babel contains every book that could possibly be written, filled with both the profound and nonsensical. Despite the overwhelming odds against finding any anything meaningful in this sea of random pixels. I just think it's a really interesting concept, as somewhere in this archive, there is every image you could possibly ever imagine. 
Hotel 626 was a web-based horror game launched in 2008. It was designed to immerse players into a spooky, interactive experience without needing a download. The game first stood out because it can only be played from 6pm to 6am, adding to its eerie atmosphere. To start the game, players are asked to enter their personal details like their phone number and enable their webcam and microphone, setting the stage for a series of challenges that blended the virtual and real worlds. The game's graphics were impressive for its time, and it included various tasks that increased in intensity. The game starts with you and a camera, and you have to go about an extremely dark room taking photos to light up your surroundings, until you eventually stumble upon and take a photo of a girl sitting in the dark. The challenges were designed to be more engaging by breaking the fourth wall, like in one of the puzzle rooms filled with photos of people where you have to find a specific photo. What you don't initially realise is that the photo you're trying to find was secretly taken with your webcam to be displayed within the game. One of the more unsettling features was the game's ability to call your phone in real life with instructions to escape the hotel. And keep in mind that the game can only be played from 6 to 6, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., so you'd likely be called in the middle of the night. Now, strangely enough, Hotel 626 was revealed to be an advertisement for Doritos. Yes, Doritos. With no direct product placement, no references, and not really anything suggesting it had to do with Doritos. His success led to a sequel, Asylum 626, which pushed the interactive elements further by integrating players' Facebook friends into the experience by posting on your Facebook about the game without you knowing. However, this sequel faced criticism for lacking the original's creativity and for a promotion that required you purchasing a bag of Doritos to progress in the game. Despite its brief existence, Hotel 626 still stands out for how unique it was for the time. The actual advertisement campaign was intended to revive discontinued Doritos flavors, yet the game itself left a much larger impact. Goggle.com is an example of a practice known as typo squatting, which is essentially what it sounds like, squatting on the misspelling or typo of a popular website's domain name. In this case, the typo is obviously for Google.com, one of the most visited websites in the world. Typo squatting is when someone registers a domain that's just a misspelled version of a popular website, hoping to catch people who make a typo when entering the website address. When you mistakenly visit Goggle, instead of finding what you are looking for, your device will be infected by the malware-laden website, where you are spammed with error messages and random pop-ups. Thisman.org is quite a fascinating website. It's all about a mysterious figure that, believe it or not, a bunch of people around the world claim they've seen in their dreams. The story goes that there was a sketch of a guy that was supposedly drawn by someone who kept seeing them in their dreams. Once they'd posted the image to the internet, loads of other people started saying the same thing, that they'd also seen the man in their dreams. The website's main goal is to connect to all these people. It's like a hub for sharing their experiences and trying to figure out who this guy is and why he's popping up in so many different people's dreams and all sorts of different scenarios. Now here's what I found more interesting intriguing. When you actually read the dream descriptions on the website, the man doesn't come off as some nightmarish figure. A lot of people describe him as a comforting presence and someone who makes them feel safe. This has obviously sparked all sorts of theories, with some people thinking that he might be some sort of divine being, while others reckon his face is just so average that it's the brain's default version of a man, which I think is most likely. The website is interactive too. There's even a contact page where you can send in your own dream experiences. Whether this man is a product of our collective subconscious or something more, thisman.org is definitely one of those websites that makes you think about the mysterious way our brains work. LastMealProject.com is a website that focuses on the last meals of people who are executed. It's kind of straightforward. You get to see a photo of the person with their last meal choice displayed over their mugshot. Though the website isn't just about what these people ate last. It's more about the broader topic of the death penalty, which shows a variety of cases, from those who might not have actually deserved the death penalty to those who are actually found innocent after their execution. Staggering Beauty is a unique website where you're greeted by a simple worm-like figure that follows your mouse movements. There's a very important heads up to know about this site. It contains extreme flashing lights that can trigger those with light-sensitive epilepsy. The site even has its own warning, so it's best to be cautious. The basic idea is simple. You move your mouse and the figure on the screen follows along. However, when it comes to moving your mouse faster as you increase the speed of your mouse movements, the website transforms from a calm flowing motion to a burst of flashing lights and loud heavy metal-like music. It's actually one of the sites that you might randomly land on if you use something like uselessweb.com. Planecrash.info.com is a comprehensive archive that lists plane crashes from all over the world. It's quite detailed, cataloging crashes with information like the number of fatalities, the location, the flight number, and the airline involved. It's structured in a way that makes it easy to understand the various aspects of each crash. One of the more somber features of the site is a section that includes the last recorded words from flights, usually from the cockpit voice recorder. These recordings capture the final moments before the crash and can be quite heavy to listen to. The website covers unusual and rare causes of plane 
plane crashes. For example, there's an incident mentioned where on an Indian Airlines flight, a vulture crashes through the cockpit window and kills the co-pilot, causing the plane to crash. Housecrew.com is a rather unique website that documents houses with a history of various incidents. These include confirmed homicides, involvement in drug-related activities, and even reports of paranormal activities. It's kind of like a database for houses with intriguing or troubled pasts. One of the features of the site is that it allows you to search for houses in your own area, which can give you insights into the events that might have taken place in properties near you, which you might pass by every day without realizing their history. Like this house in Ontario, Canada, that was the home of Corporal Marie France Como, who was murdered by the extremely infamous Colonel Russell Williams. The paranormal section of the website is particularly interesting as it contains stories of some alleged hauntings or other explained phenomena. So housegroup.com basically offers a unique window into the lesser known histories of properties, blending the factual with the slightly more mysterious. Lamando.com is an online horror puzzle game created by a developer known as Nahito. It's set in a haunted amusement park called Fancy Island. In the game, you play as an unnamed protagonist, referred to as you or the visitor. The game cleverly masks its sinister nature with an exterior that seems cute and innocent, luring visitors in. However, once inside, the player discovers a transformed park filled with puzzles, cryptic codes, and of course, ghosts. The game plays a mix of exploration and RPG-style battles. Also, solving puzzles and navigating through the maze-like park are key aspects. Aspects. Battling against various enemies are crucial to progress and obtaining codes that are essential for further advancement in the game. So Lamando.com offers a unique gaming experience, blending classic Japanese horror elements with puzzle solving RPG battles. 1 times 60 is, well I feel like this could apply to all the websites, but it's very unique. To access it, you merely type 1 60 times on your keyboard and then .com. It's definitely not your everyday website. Once you're there, what you'll find is a collection of images where Arnold Schwarzenegger is photoshopped into various characters from Sailor Moon. Though as you move your cursor around the page, you'll notice images and pictures that pop up momentarily. The only clickable thing on the page is the enter button at the bottom, which takes you to another similar page where Photoshop pictures of Tony Blair's face on Margaret Thatcher's body. You click enter again on this page and it takes you to another Photoshop masterpiece with American politicians as characters from Lord of the Rings. This goes on for dozens and dozens of pages, including Photoshops of North Korean leaders and a few of George Bush. Now we need a little bit of backstory for this one. Margaret Lillian Adams, better known by her YouTube alias Maggie Bon, began her online journey in 2006. Her videos were simple yet certainly unique, as she would just stare at the camera. Though she would start every one of her videos by introducing herself, as well as saying goodbye at the end of her brilliant videos. This minimalist approach surprisingly caught the attention of quite a wide audience, with her channel today sitting at well over 100,000 subscribers. By 2010, she was a well-recognized figure on YouTube, Though her rise in popularity led to opportunities beyond YouTube. In 2008, she was involved with various projects in Japan, including a TV deal with a Japanese streaming company and an appearance on a TV show called Midtown TV. She even appeared at the Tokyo Film Festival and did voice acting in the film Blue Symphony. However, alongside her growing fame, Maggie Bon attracted some unwelcome attention, notably from an individual who created MaggieBon.com. Initially thought to be named Frank, this person posted videos and messages that displayed an unsettling obsession with Maggie Bon. The content on the site was obviously made to disturb Maggie Bon and those who watched. In one of Frank's videos, he directly references Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, which is a romantic comedy. Though later, it was revealed that Frank was actually Joachim Dunung, a digital art student conducting a social experiment. He exploited Maggie Bon's internet fame to explore different online behaviours and reactions. In his eyes, his project was successful in terms of attracting attention and stirring debate, highlighting the curious dynamics of internet fame and the impact it can have on people. Maggie Bon ceased uploading to her YouTube channel in 2014, though despite the unnerving experience with her pretend stalker, she's maintained a presence on social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter, indicating that she's more than moved past this strange chapter in her life. EnricsAngelFire.com It's obviously hosted on AngelFire, a web hosting service, and the site initially doesn't seem too out of the ordinary. However, as you dive in, things get more perplexing. The website revolves around something called Enrix, which is described as some sort of disease, as well as referring to something called Gomex Syndrome. Gomex is described as a genetic mutation affecting glandular tissue. But here's where things get slightly weird. A quick internet search reveals that neither Enrix or Gomex seem to exist outside the realm of this website. The site features a few pages accessible via the header bar. On the homepage, there's a photo of a person who looks like a doctor and some numbers in the corner. When you click on the photo, it slightly distorts. And if you click it more, it distorts more and more with each click. And the text on the site starts to become more jumbled and nonsensical. If you persist in clicking the photo, you eventually reach a page with a smiley face and a message saying, please wake up. 
Thank you for visiting our website. Another page simply titled Enrix shows a blue key with more distorted text. Clicking the key takes you back to the homepage, but there's also a bypass login link that leads to a page with a message about the dream ending and the Persephone number station video, which actually originates from an ARG linked to the TV show Lost but this seems to have just been stolen by Emrex Angel Fire. Interestingly, some Reddit users have further delved into the site's imagery. The photo of the woman on the homepage is apparently from the Bangkok Dental Clinic website, but why it was used specifically remains a mystery. Another Reddit user claimed to have found a PDF linked to the site, supposedly directing them to a non-existent Thai mental health hotline, but this link seems to have disappeared. Grotto.faith includes five unique sections, Bornless, Crypt, Chernobyl, Ezekiel, and Solomon. Each of these sites offer a distinct interactive experience, but they all share somewhat of a mysterious and enigmatic vibe. Starting with bornless.grotto.faith, this site has a religious theme. When you enter, you'll hear a speech that sounds like it's about Jesus Christ and religion, and scrolling down, there's a button simply labeled enter. Clicking on it takes you to a page with a color changing background and some ominous music. The main section here is a search bar that functions like a magic eight ball, answering the questions that you type in. If you then enter the main door, a crudely drawn person asks you if you want to ascend, saying yes does basically nothing and saying no takes you to what looks like hell saying they know this place better anyways once you've sat there for a minute you'll be taken to a map most of these little dots marking the map take me to a 404 error but this one took me to jimmy's world an ugly page with what i guess is jimmy just floating around moving on to crypt this one has a creepier vibe the homepage shows a floating moon with the word crypt clicking on it causes a glitch effect with static and in the next screen you'll see three floating objects a question mark a train and a glass of milk clicking on the train offers a choice between heaven and hell choosing hell brings you to a page with an inverted cross cursor and then redirects you back to the distorted homepage. clicking on any of the options from here takes you further down into hell until you reach this maggot infested page with a heart. Clicking on the heart adds it to your inventory, which I didn't even realize was a thing until I got it. Though the heaven option doesn't lead anywhere significant. The milk and question mark options present different scenarios, like interacting with a milkman or wise old man, with pre-programmed questions or responses. Talking with the milkman didn't do anything for me, but talking with the old man eventually led him to offer me some tea. Drinking the tea takes you to a page with Alquazar Ak the Impenetrable. I imagine you have to solve a small puzzle to get through him, but I honestly couldn't figure it out. The Chernobyl page of the site doesn't really seem to have anything on the page apart from a little passage from the Bible and two torches. And Ezekiel.grotto.faith is strange to say the least. This little creature encourages you to walk with him. If you click walk, he says he's God and he'll prove it by slaughtering all that you know. Finally, Solomon.grotto.faith is more straightforward. The main clickable element is a link to an eight page PDF about masculine and feminine symbolism in the Kabbalah. The website also features various symbols, numbers and names, but I couldn't figure out any of their meanings. A columbinesite.com is a detailed archive dedicated to the tragic events that occurred at Columbine High School in 1999. The website serves as a comprehensive resource for those looking to understand more about what happened on that day. The site provides a vast array of information, including profiles on the victims, as well as the perpetrators, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. It offers a factual and straightforward account of the events, including photos, videos, and news clips from the time. You know, we can't have any weapons on school grounds, get suspended, expelled, you know, all that stuff. But uh, off school grounds, we can use our computers. It offers factual and straightforward accounts of the events. The website houses various documents related to the incident that includes the transcripts and the videotapes made by Harris and Klebold, known commonly as the basement tapes that were never fully released by the FBI, as well as their diaries, online profiles, and other personal writings. There's also an extensive collection of official records like autopsy reports and crime scene photos. The purpose of a columbinesite.com is to ensure that the events of the massacre are never forgotten. Though if you are going to visit the website, you should be aware that a lot of the content is naturally very disturbing. 5050 is a subreddit you've probably heard of. It works kind of like a coin toss. Each post has two possible outcomes, something nice or something not so nice. You don't know what you're going to get until you click on it. So a typical post might say, man dancing with a shark or man being eaten alive by a shark. It's a gamble. You click obviously hoping for the good one, but you might end up with a less appealing option. ObsidianSnow.net offers quite a unique online experience. It's set up as sort of a click-through adventure where you navigate from one page to another, clicking on various elements. When you start, you're greeted with a page that features a triangle made of circles. Clicking on any of these circles redirects you to pages on another site, being HerkateStation.net. From here, each click leads you to yet another page, 
kind of creating a chain of sorts. Some of the pages you might land on are quite unusual. There's one with stone tablets that have images of what seem like mythical creatures overlaid on top. There's another page that I landed on where there's an animation of spiders that appear to crawl across your screen. You'll also find some pages that lead to downloadable files like zip files or password protected PDFs. I was also able to find another page that might have held the password to these PDFs. However, for safety reasons, I opted not to download anything from the website. The overall purpose or end game of the website isn't very clear. It seems like more of just an exploration of web designs and interactive elements than a site with a specific goal or message. Intercam.org is a digital directory, sort of like an online phone book, but instead of phone numbers, it's listing live feeds from unsecured surveillance and CCTV cameras. These cameras are often set up anywhere from public spaces to random roads to office buildings, but they haven't had their default passwords changed, so essentially anyone who knows about the site can just pop in and start watching these camera feeds, which is more than weird, especially considering that these people have no idea who could be watching them. Though Intcam isn't the only site doing this, there's another one called Opentopia, which offers a similar peek into unsecured cameras. These sites make it super easy to access these feeds, and they even allow you to search for cameras based on location. The real issue here is obviously about security and privacy. These unsecured cameras pose a risk, as they could potentially be used for harmful purposes like planning a burglary or even cyber attacks. And obviously from a privacy standpoint, it's quite concerning because people might not even realize their camera feeds are accessible to the public. At the bottom of the Intscam website, it states, only filtered cameras are available now. This way, none of the cameras on Intscam can invade anyone's private life. Any private or unethical camera will be removed immediately upon email complaint. So at the very least, there aren't any cameras hosted on the site that are a direct look into someone's home. Kekma.ga, now known as Kekma.net, is a website that's quite notorious for its shocking and explicit content. Before we go any further, it's important to note that this site definitely isn't for everyone, as it contains extremely graphic content, along with flashing images that could trigger seizures. When you enter the site, you're greeted with a prompt asking if you want to enter. Once you decide to proceed, the website becomes quite intense. It plays loud, jarring sounds and shows a loop of very graphic and violent images. Without going into extreme detail, the site features extreme gore and animal abuse and is definitely not for the light-hearted. AngusNickNevin.com is a website that takes you on a somewhat eerie journey through a world called Terminal 00. The site sets a certain mood with its dark imagery and haunting background music. The website is quite intricate, offering numerous paths and links to explore. It's so detailed and complex that there's even a subreddit dedicated to figuring it out. The creator of the site is Angus Nick Nevin, with the website obviously being named after him. Angus is also an author, having written a book called Stars Bleed. The website and the book are connected, with the site providing additional narrative elements and lore related to the book. However, according to Angus himself, there's no overarching plot to the website. As you navigate through the site, it's an immersive experience. Some of the parts are designed to make you feel uneasy due to its glitchy animations, obscure moving objects, and the overall dark and mysterious vibe. The website has over 300 pages with short stories, puzzles like click-through mazes, and cryptic images that have left many users intrigued and trying to decipher them. All in all, it's a richly layered website that could take a lot of time to fully explore and understand. Superbad.com is a website where every click leads you to a new page. And just to clarify, it's not related to the film Superbad. When you visit the site, you'll click on something and it'll take you to another page. Each page is different and you never know where the click will take you. And it's like going down a path where each turn brings you to a new environment. There are a lot of different pages on the site. For example, after navigating different pages for like 10 minutes, I landed on these circles. Each of these little circles lead to another page, like this page that seems to be a letter from Uncle Jay, apologizing for the turkey neck incident at their last Thanksgiving dinner. There seems to be a decent amount of lore surrounding Uncle Jay, like in this page I found from a Mr. Hubris. Some of these pages might even catch you off guard because they're quite unexpected. The site has been around since the 1990s, which is quite cool because some of the stuff on this website would have been fairly unique for the time, like all the strange little animations was just not something you would see. I don't really know how to describe subculture.com. It's not outright horrifying or gory, but definitely falls into the category of the stranger parts of the internet. When you visit the site, you'll be thrown a mix of random, sometimes jarring images. These could range from historical events, to heavily edited images of naked women, or just completely random images. You also get spammed with pop-ups of various natures, with some being images of terrorist attacks, while others might be explicit or just plain weird, giving you the impression that something's wrong with your computer. When I visited Subculture, the site spammed me with so many tabs it got to the point where it's hard to close them. It turns out that the creator of the site is Antonio Mendoza, and in an interview he did with Scare Theatre, he explained that Subculture.com was part of a movement called NetArt, around the mid-90s to early 2000s. The site is meant to be a destabilizing experience, 
leaving you unsure if your computer's malfunctioning as it's random by design and aims to entertain and intrigue without being too disturbing. Addressing those who found the site creepy or unsettling, Mendoza's take is quite straightforward. It's just a website and it's not meant to be creepy. He notes that the site is a bit dated and might not work perfectly on newer browsers, but it's part of a larger collection of similar internet art projects from that era. Militantconsumerism.wordpress.com seems to be a simple blog, but as you dive into its content, it gets much more complex. The content covers a range of detailed and esoteric subjects. For instance, it discusses global politics and conspiracy theories, like those surrounding the assassinations of MLK and JFK, suggesting the involvement by organizations like the FBI. It's quite a deep dive into some of the internet's most infamous conspiracy theories. The final post from the author is also intriguing. They mentioned stopping their blogging about the secret plans of groups like the Reptilian Illuminati New World Order, ending with a request for help in deleting the blog, leaving you wondering about the seriousness and reality behind these posts. I mean, the site overall is a peculiar mix of conspiracy theories and insights into secret organizations. While it's easy to dismiss much of the content as far-fetched, the depth and detail the poster goes into can be quite captivating and just makes for an interesting read. LHOHQ is a bizarre website that seems like a random maze of content. We won't do a full deep dive into all the site has to offer, as there have been tons of videos covering the site. It's got a mix of odd videos, lots of text, with a lot of it being nonsensical and strange. The site's full name, Laughing Horses Orifice Headquarters, is just as weird as everything else you'll find on here. The site itself is huge, with over 800 pages and all sorts of types of content. Though the main controversy of the site, and where it gets most of its fame, is that some of the pages display the personal information about various individuals, mainly American public and political figures, most notably being information like Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump's phone numbers. So if you do visit the site, definitely don't use any of the info from here to contact these people, as it's certainly a quick way to get into trouble. The site itself is very interactive. There are loads of components that allow visitors to engage with the content in various ways, such as clicking through a series of links that lead deeper into the site's labyrinth structure, or just being able to look at the many pages with bizarre art pieces. Though my favorite parts of the site are the pages that delve into conspiracy theories or offer commentary on political and social issues, sometimes presented in a way that's intentionally ambiguous or challenging to interpret. These might include references to real-world events like MKUltra or fictional narratives that mimic the style of conspiracy thinking. Now this one isn't disturbing, though I do find it slightly strange. In my travels across the dark web, I eventually stumbled upon a link labelled simply CIA. I clicked on it thinking it would be another illegal marketplace or weird forum, but it's a website genuinely owned and operated by the CIA, where you can read about their mission and even apply for a job. I guess they host the website on the dark web as a sort of mini test. As if you have the basic technical know-how to get on the dark web, you're likely better suited to the internet-based work that you might have to do if you do work for them. The BlackVault.com is an extensive archive that's really interesting for those into government secrets and conspiracy theories. It's got a huge collection, over 2 million pages, of documents that were once kept private by the US government. So if you're into digging deep into what the US government might be keeping under wraps, this website is fantastic. It hosts everything from the full Jeffrey Epstein court documents to files in regards to JFK's assassination that went unreleased until last year. Among its many sections, definitely my favourite area is dedicated to paranormal activities and UFO sightings reported around the world that were actually investigated by the US government. Like in this random UFO sighting in Australia, where two families, complete strangers to one another, were driving along a quiet road, where they could see some sort of vehicle hovering above the road. The main witness described it as circular, with lots of windows and different coloured lights on the sides. Basically like a very typical alien spaceship you might see in a cartoon. One of the families was so confused by the incident that they reported it. They described the exact location and movements of the craft, and then they eventually managed to track down the other family that was on the road with them, and they described the craft in the exact same way, and it being in the exact same spot completely independently. The site isn't that disturbing on its own, but it can be a bit unsettling when you think about how much information there is that the public hasn't seen before. Now Galdrux, to put it simply, is a cult website, and it's definitely unusual. It's all about this concept of Galdrux, a sort of mystical multiverse idea. The whole site is a blend of deep spiritual stuff with a twist of high-tech mysticism. The main page of the website says they're currently looking for people with certain skill sets to fulfill their plans of creating a kind of network of these Galdrux cults all around the planet. They need people who are educated on how to build and develop virtual reality and alternate reality technology. They need people to study artificial intelligence, and in their words, to find ways 
ways to reach a multiverse of this singularity through techno mysticism. There are also a few clickable links on the site, like this one that takes you to long scrolls of really weird images that when you click on them seems to take you to more random images. You can then keep clicking on these images to be brought to more and more pages like this. I have no idea how long it goes on for and I have no idea if there's an end to it. Nymph.org was a notorious website known for its shock content. It is created by a group whose name I cannot say on video, who are famous for online trolling. The site was designed to surprise and often disturb visitors with its content. When you landed on the main page, you were greeted with a series of gory, disgusting and disturbing images. What made Nymph particularly tricky was its use of browser exploits. These allowed the site to bypass standard pop-up blockers, leading to multiple windows opening with these shocking images, and the windows weren't just static either. They are programmed to move around the screen, making them much harder to close. The website also had a notorious feature of replication, so if the user tried to close their browser to escape the content, the site would just generate more windows, making it hard to leave the site. As it was a troll site, nymph.org could be disguised in various URLs, this meant users could be inadvertently directed to the site without realizing what it was. Basically like Rick Rolling, but much worse. Now I had to use the Wayback Machine for this one, but israeltodaynews.blogspot.com was a blog that at first glance seemed like your typical conspiracy theory site. The blog focused heavily on a character named David Goldberg and his alleged revelations about secret government projects, notably Project Pogo and Project Zephyr. Project Pogo was described as a government initiative to create social media accounts to track conspiracy theorists and social dissidents. Project Zephyr, on the other hand, was supposedly about a plan for a new world order taking over in 2020 with COVID-19 being a central element. The predict Predictions and theories on the site, however, obviously didn't come to pass, as in 2021 the scenarios described hadn't unfolded like they said they would. The interesting twist with this blog wasn't just the conspiracy theories it promoted, but the suspected underlying motive. The speculation that the site was part of a clever scheme to encourage its readers to buy Bitcoin. The blog of Weave mentions of Bitcoin and suggests readers to get some, and as the readers delve deeper into the site's content, they will come across another site, BitcoinQ.org. This site was allegedly a trap designed to steal the Bitcoins that the users have just purchased. The specifics on how the theft would be executed isn't clear, but the intention seemed to be to scam people out of their cryptocurrency. I'm not going to be sharing any of the Darknet links in this video for your safety as well as for the sake of my channel. Hidden Answers is basically the Reddit of the Darknet. Its front page is almost the exact same format as the old Reddit and works in basically the same way with an upvote and downvote system. Though as you can expect, the questions that people are asking here are of a more illegal nature. Like this post asking how they can make TNT and grenades to destroy trees. Or another user asking for any PDFs available online to teach them how to make fake money. Dread is also another one of these Reddit clones that are slightly more active with dozens of posts being made each day, like someone asking for a decent gun vendor, or like the pinned post on the website declaring their giveaway of 20 ounces of something. Antimatrix.org is a website that definitely leans into the world of conspiracy theories. It's set up like a blog and is filled with articles and posts covering a wide range of topics that conspiracy theorists often discuss. This includes subjects like the whole idea of a Zionist occupied government, where Jews secretly control the world within secret societies, and even more extreme topics like ritual sacrifice. The site itself kind of acts as a search engine, as it has hundreds and hundreds of pages and posts. For instance, this whole page is dedicated to ritualistic murders and how Jews are actually worshippers of Lucifer which by extension makes them evil, and how the CIA is secretly supplying children to be used in ritualistic sacrifices, which is linked to broader issues like the disappearance of children each year. It's important to note that most of the content on antimatrix.org isn't original to the site. The author has gathered many of these posts from various other sources like books, and has compiled them into one central hub. One post titled The Secret Covenant talks about a secretive society supposedly taking over the world, which is a common theme in most of these posts. Apocalypse Prepping is a site hosted on the dark web, which is basically paranoia in written form, from what seems to be a singular poster. They have lots of very detailed posts on what we can expect to see in the near future, like one of his most recent posts titled simply, What to Expect. One day you might wake up and the internet is gone, power might be gone, TV and radio stations are offline, no one knows why or how, stores will be overrun and goods necessary for survival such as food, water, hardware supplies, medicine and gasoline will be sold out. People will be out on the streets and observing anyone's actions every day in great detail. In urban areas, people will organize into mobs and gangs to steal from each other. It's difficult to predict how much this will be an issue. He details his plans to combat the impending doom of humanity by buying huge stockpiles of foods and by creating teams of trusted people by letting them know of the Earth's nearing apocalypse and preparing them for it. The owner of the website also advocates for secrecy, seclusion and isolation as he views them as paramount for survival. 
Your first priority should be physical distance. Prep and bug out into a secluded vacation home in the wilderness if you can. Or maybe you know a relative in a remote location to whom you can build a high level of trust from now on and eventually let him in on your prepping plans. The higher the population density where you live, the more you should bend your mind around it in advance to somehow be able to get more safer stock prepared and more rural shelter on doomsday. Generally speaking, staying in an urban environment is a very, very bad situation. But in any case, you should stay in a very secure place where your supplies are and where you can defend them. Though the poster seems to be familiar with all sorts of near extinction events, recently they set their minds on AI, and maybe more justifiably so. In their detailed post titled The Great Threat, they talk all about how ChatGPT is already to pass human intelligence, and how it's only a matter of time before humans are the ones controlled by AI and not the other way around. Rentahitman.com is a satirical website that has got quite an unusual backstory. Bob Innes, who's from Northern California, bought the domain back in 2005 for just over $9. The original plan was to start an IT company using the website with his friends, but that didn't pan out. So instead, Bob designed the website to resemble kind of a hitman forum, where you can put out a hit on a real person in exchange for payment. Fast forwarding to 2008, Bob checks the site's email, and to his surprise, there are hundreds of messages from people, with some of them thinking it's a real hitman hiring service. Most seem like jokes, but in 2010, he got a serious request from a woman in Canada named Helen, who had contacted the website with a detailed and serious inquiry. She wanted to hire a hitman to eliminate three of her family members in the UK, believing they had cheated her out of her inheritance. The request was alarming due to how specific it was, including the names and addresses of the intended targets. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Bob didn't take it lightly. He was friends with a police sergeant in California to whom he forwarded Helen's details. That police sergeant then contacted the Canadian police, who got involved and then arrested Helen. She was initially jailed in Canada for four months and later she was extradited to the UK when she was actually wanted for other serious charges. After the event, Bob continued operating Renter Hitman but emphasized its satirical nature. He filled the site with clear indicators of parody and surprisingly it still attracts serious inquiries. Bob, under the pseudonym Guido Finelli, responds to serious inquiries by giving them a chance to back out. If they persist, he refers them to the police. He also immediately reports any request involving minors. The site's gotten some attention and a surprising number of people have been arrested because of it. Bob sees the site as a way to catch people with harmful intentions and he obviously runs it out of his own pocket, though he does accept donations and even added a fake careers page for those wanting to become a hitman. WorldCorpo.net is a website that's no longer around, but it left behind quite an unsettling legacy. It's possible to take a look back at what it was through the Wayback Machine. The site was known for some really disturbing content, which is mainly why it got infamous. The site was linked to the production of what I'll call PC Backwards. Hosted on the site were videos that were heavily edited and hard to properly see, but the audio was still clear. It featured videos of children screaming and what seemed like genuine terror. There were also equally strange videos of naked men doing, not criminal, but very strange things. Besides the videos, the website also had sections for images and music, which was meant to be its main purpose. The music part had rap songs with quite extreme lyrics, but nothing extraordinary, and the images section was filled with nightmarish and disturbing stuff. The site got shut down in 2019, and that's probably for the best considering what was on there. MrDeepfakes.com is a slightly bizarre and very controversial website. What it does is that it uses deepfake technology to put celebrities' faces on adult film actors' bodies. For example, you might stumble upon a video on the website that looks like it's featuring Scarlett Johansson, but actually it's just her face pasted onto someone else's body. Now obviously aside from the ethical issue of the videos, it doesn't feel very legal either, and it's kind of a grey area to be honest. From what I understand, celebrities, or anyone for that matter, don't own the copyright of their face. So there's technically nothing wrong with these videos legally. But then again, if someone feels like their personal privacy is being invaded, they could very easily sue for that. Though the thing is, by the time someone realizes their face has been used and decides to take action, the video might have already gotten thousands of views and been downloaded to hundreds of computers. Ethically speaking, it's obviously extremely creepy. As on MrDeepfakes.com alone, there are over 100,000 fake nudes and videos being shared around the website. The website Heavensgate.com is a remnant of the Heavensgate cult, a religious group with a tragic history. It was founded in 1974 by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Lou Nettles. The cult blended elements of Christianity with beliefs in UFOs and extraterrestrial life. Applewhite, after a series of personal hardships and a meeting with Nettles, came to believe that they were destined for a significant spiritual undertaking. They both adopted nicknames with Nettles being referred to as T and Applewhite being referred to as Do and started spreading their message. Their teachings included the belief that they would lead their followers to a higher evolutionary level and that the earth was going to be recycled. 
planet Earth about to be recycled. Your only chance to survive or evacuate is to leave with us. They gained followers by holding meetings and advertising to people who are interested in UFOs. These meetings were described as euphoric by some of the attendees, with Applewhite's message resonating deeply with their personal beliefs. The group lived a nomadic lifestyle in the early days, relying on donations by their members and focusing on spiritual teachings. They emphasized a life of renunciation, including abstaining from sexual activity and maintaining an androgynous appearance. The group's doctrine evolved over time, especially after Nettles' death in 1985 from cancer, which was a significant blow to Applewhite and the group's foundational beliefs. Though in March 1997, the group would gain international attention. Applewhite convinced his followers that Earth would be destroyed and that they needed to leave their physical bodies to ascend to a spaceship, believed to be trailing behind a comet that was going to fly past the Earth. In a carefully planned ritual, 39 members, including Applewhite, ended their time on Earth in their mansion in Rancho Santa Fe, California, and the members were found dressed identically, wearing black and white Nike Decade sneakers, which became widely recognized as a symbol of the cult. Their website, heavensgate.com, is still active today, as it serves as a digital artifact of the cult's existence. It contains the writings and teachings from the group, and reflects the beliefs and practices that defined Heaven's Gate. The site's continued operation is managed by former members of the cult. Pink Meth was one of the largest websites in the realm of revenge, the whole point of the site was that it allowed users to anonymously post explicit images of their ex-partners, obviously without their consent. The site didn't stop there either. The posts often included personal information and social media links of the individuals in the images. It was originally hosted on the surface web, but then it had to be moved to the dark web. Though luckily for the people in the images, PinkMeth did have a removal request process. Though this process was not designed to actually help the victims remove their images, rather the victims were asked to submit lengthy personal stories in a manner that basically mocked them and so it was their fault their images were on the web anyways, so their images would never be taken down. The nature of PinkMeth's content and the operation sparked significant legal action. In November 2014, the website was shut down as part of Operation Onimus, a large-scale law enforcement effort targeting illegal activities on the dark web. PinkMeth was one of over two dozen websites closed in the operation. As for the creator of PinkMeth, details about their identity and whether they face legal consequences remain unclear. This entry is different and it's definitely the saddest on the list. Babyangelpix.com, also known as the Angel Pix Project, is dedicated to helping families who've gone through the loss of a newborn or stillborn baby. The site offers a special service where families who have lost a baby can update an image of their stillborn or newborn to the website, where artists will then retouch the photographs of these infants, which means they will carefully edit the photos to remove any medical equipment, visible marks, or bruising. They can even change the background to create an image that feels more peaceful and serene. I just thought it was an undeniably unusual and very sad website that was worthy of being on the list. There is also another website, stillbornangels.memoryof.com, that simply hosts pictures of stillborn babies. Families can post their pictures to a publicly available photo gallery where everyone can see their baby. The website makes it clear that only families who have gone through stillbirth and premature death of their child are allowed on the website. Those who are simply looking to ridicule the families for posting their photos will have their IP addresses investigated. 5nchronicles.blogspot.com is a blog that's quite unsettling once you understand its context. It might appear as a typical blog at first glance, but it's actually written by Joseph E. Duncan III, a convicted serial killer and inmate on federal death row. To give a bit of background on Duncan, he started his criminal activities at a young age. As a teenager, he was involved in multiple against boys as young as nine years old and was in and out of prison for various other crimes. His crimes escalated over the years, leading to several murders. Notably in 2005, he was responsible for the deaths of Brenda Grohn, her boyfriend Mark McKenzie, and her son Slade Grohn, who were all found in their home. Brenda, who had two other children, being Dylan and Shasta, were nowhere to be found. Seven weeks later, Shasta was seen at a Denny's restaurant in the company of a man we now know to be Joseph Duncan. Shasta was actually instrumental in Duncan's capture and was only kept alive because, as Duncan describes it, she showed him how to love. Her other missing brother Dylan wasn't so lucky and was also found to be murdered. The website 5 nchroniclesblogspotcom is essentially a collection of diary entries from Duncan, detailing his life in prison. These posts are actually made possible by him sending letters to an unknown individual who then publishes them online. The content of the blog is actually surprisingly mundane, discussing his day-to-day -day grievances like his hair loss and weight changes and experiences in prison. Though some of the posts do delve into more disturbing topics, like one where Duncan discusses visiting his step 
stepsister merely weeks after capturing and killing another teenage boy. Reading through the blog can be a bit jarring, as it's the words of a man who committed heinous crimes, yet the posts often sound like those of an average person dealing with everyday issues. The blog has entries dating back to 2010, with the last post made in January 2021, shortly before Duncan's death in March 2021 from a brain tumour. Now I'm sure you've heard of 4chan, an image board that hosts all sorts of content, but we're looking at 8chan.mo, which is basically 4chan but somehow worse, with it actually being delisted from Google search due to it hosting so much PC backwards. 8chan.mo is hosted on the dark web, and it obviously has much more depraved content. On 4chan you can see a list of all the boards you'd like to visit, like anime, fitness, photography. 8chan.mo follows the same format, but one of the boards is called you might already be able to see where this is going. People, exclusively men it seems like, post horrific videos and images of them loving their pets. Normally their dogs in a very disgusting and obviously criminal way. There are tons of these images and videos, all having very supportive comments underneath them, praising the posters and how they interact with their dogs. That's about all there is to say about the website. Let's move on. So for this entry, I'm not going to be naming any specific website, rather just a certain type of website I came across. There are sites on the internet that claim to offer hacking services. These sites are obviously not just ethically shaky, but outright illegal. They offer their services hacking into people's personal accounts, DDoSing websites, and even setting up people for crimes they didn't commit, like remotely planting CP on people's computers. And all the dealings on the websites are obviously done anonymously, typically through cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, so both the customer and hacker can stay under the radar. Obviously getting involved with sites like these is a bad idea. It's one thing to be curious about the dark corners of the internet, but actually engaging with these services can obviously lead to serious consequences, both legally and personally. In the same realm, there's all the illegal drug markets and counterfeit money sites, which I'm not going to cover in detail because they're all the same. They're all rife for scammers and phishing schemes, and they're just not really worth talking about. The Cannibal Cafe was an online forum created in 1994, notorious for its content centered around, well, cannibalism. It wasn't hidden in the dark web, but was accessible on the normal internet. The forum's main purpose was for individuals interested in cannibalism, either as a fantasy or as an actual practice, to connect, discuss, and to potentially arrange to fulfill these fantasies. The site's founder, known by the pseudonym Pero Loco, was later identified and interviewed. He was linked to another website dedicated to various death-related fetishes and had a background that seemingly included some medical knowledge. This was evident in the detailed and expert answers he provided on the forum, especially on topics like how to harm a person minimally while fulfilling cannibalistic desires. The content on the forum was diverse and disturbing. It ranged from people seeking willing participants to be eaten to others volunteering themselves for the purpose. Some posts even included detailed recipes and cooking tips. The forum was a mix of mostly role-playing, but also serious inquiries, making it a blurred line between fantasy and potential reality, though not all the discussions on the site were mere role-play. Some of the members were serious about their intentions, a fact underscored by the case of Armin Muse, known as Frankie on the forum. Muse was arrested in 2004 for murdering and eating a willing victim, Burned Brands, who, let me reiterate, actually consented to Muse murdering and then eating him. While it's believed that Muse and Brands did not meet via the Cannibal Cafe in specific, Muse was an active participant in the forum, seeking someone who consented to be eaten. And that concludes our video. If you want something else to watch or listen to, you can check out the horrible YouTube iceberg or the illegal and disturbing video game iceberg I made. Thanks for watching.